full control of this meeting. I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask of faith. Lord, I pray your perfect will will be done in this meeting. Lord, we bind every demonic force, God, every principality, every power, every rule of darkness that may want to interrupt, that may want to disrupt this meeting. And we tell Satan and all his principalities, no, in the name of Jesus. And we pray that signs and wonders will follow the preaching of this word here and throughout the world. In the name of Jesus, we pray for miracles. We pray for miracles of healings, miracles of uh, um, deliverances, every need met in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray you'll do the supernatural. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for it, God. And we pray that every one of the people's needs will be met over and above, God. We pray that our faith will rise, that we will be expectant. Lord, I pray you'll prepare the people's hearts to receive the word. Lord, we pray for the correct of you in audiences. And we thank you and we praise you for it. In the wonderful, precious, and perfect name of Jesus, we have prayed. And the church said, Amen and Amen. So I welcome you again. Thank you so much for viewing. And those of you who are going to watch it on the, our YouTube channel later, I thank you so much. For those of you who are not followers, who haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, just tap in Pastor Pamela D. Daniels and subscribe. Like the videos if you like them and share them. So let's get into the word. Today I will be ministering on doing the will of the Father. Doing the will of the Father. Well, someone might be saying, well, Pastor Daniels, what is the will of the Father? The will of the Father is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So when you do his word, you are doing the will of the Father. We need to be doers of the word of God, not just hearers of the word of God. We need to delight ourselves in the Lord and he will give us the desires of our heart. Hallelujah. Jesus did the perfect will of the Father. And a part of doing the perfect will of the Father is being in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. Praise God. Because there's a time and a season and a purpose for everything under heaven. We are imitators of Christ, according to Ephesians 5, 1, we should imitate our father as beloved children imitate their father. So we should imitate God. And he went about doing good. He went about healing all who were oppressed and harassed of the devil, for God was with him. He only did and said the things that the father said. So we must do the same, or at least I try to do the same. He said, well, in John 14, 12, not only will we do the works that Jesus did, that we will do greater works than what he did. So let's have a look at Luke chapter 5 verse 12. So please open your Bibles if you're following by a Bible and go to Luke chapter 5 verse 12. If it's an iPad or whatever device you're using, please um, go to Luke 5 verse 12. Today I will be um, reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Hallelujah. So we give God honor and we give God glory. Someone might be thinking, why can't I just listen to the word of God? I have no need to open the Bible. Well, if, if, you, if you're not blind and, and you can see, you should open the Bible because he says in Proverbs 4.20, my son, attend to my word. Attend, pay attention, give as much attention as you possibly can to the word of God. Let them not depart from your eyes. See, he's saying to get them in, coming in, get the word of God coming in through your ears, through your eyes, through whatever source you can get it coming through. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when you hear and see the word of God, it can be it can become alive for you. Many times when you're going through scriptures, sometimes I, because I minister, uh, I mean, I partner with many other ministries and sometimes I may receive a partner letter from them and as I'm reading it or as I'm studying the word of God and I'm reading a book or whatever it is, sometimes I may get a message out of that um, very message that I'm listening to or as I turn to a verse, the Holy Spirit may speak several scriptures to me and sometimes it turns into a book, sometimes it turns into several messages. So when, when you put your eyes on the word of God, you will receive more knowledge, you will receive more wisdom, more understanding, it will be um, more likely to be implanted in your heart. Praise the name of Jesus because the attention that you give to something is the attention that is the 
they are measured is going to come back to you. I mean, in a good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. If you have problems, right, and you magnify the problems, it may be a little problem, but before you, you know, it may seem a mountain to you because you're spending time meditating on the uh, words of the devil, the lies of the devil, who only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, and then you may find yourself in a mountain of depression, a mountain of uh, giving up wanting to quit, wanting to commit suicide because you are meditating on the wrong thing. So we need to magnify God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And his name is a wonderful name. It's a powerful name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. So are you going to run into the word of God? I encourage you to run into the word of God. Run into God's love in arms and you will be saved because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. God cannot fail. God cannot lie. He is the everlastingly good God. Hallelujah. He was there in the beginning and he will be there in the end. He is the one who formed you in your mother's womb. Praise the name of Jesus. Imagine wonderful God taking time out to form each and every one of us in our mother's womb. And he has a, um, a plan and a purpose for your life. And his thoughts and plans towards us are thoughts of good and not of evil, is of welfare to give us hope in our final outcome. So it's not for us to give up, cave in and quit. It's not a plan of debt. It's not a plan of defeat. It's not a plan of poverty. It's not a plan of hopelessness. But he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And the blessings of the Lord, it make it the rich. And God himself, our wonderful provider, our wonderful healer, the one who sticks closer to us than a brother or a friend. The blessings of the Lord, it make it the rich and he added no sorrow with it. So if sorrow is coming your way, so if you've lost a loved one, praise the name of Jesus, if you've lost your job, if you lost your joy, it, it hasn't come from God. That's the devil who only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But our wonderful God, our wonderful Redeemer, he came <laughs> that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He is the good shepherd who gave his life for the sheep. He is the one who helps to put you to bed every night and wake you up every morning in, in your sound mind. Praise God and believers, we have the mind of Christ. So when we um, get upset with someone, we don't have to tell them off and curse them and give them a piece of our mind because we, we are new creation in Christ. All things are passed away. The fresh and new have begun and we have the mind of Christ. So therefore we think on things that are true things that are honest, things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are of good report, and if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, we think on these things. So we choose to forgive even before the problem comes against us, even before the person trespass against us. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So we must have soft, forgiving hearts as our Father has soft and forgiving heart. He has forgiven us of so many things, we can forgive others. We need to set our mind to forgive even before the problem occurs. So Luke chapter 5 verse 12, and I said before, I will be reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. While he, this is Jesus the Anointed One and his anointing, was in one of the towns there came a man full of, covered with leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell at his face. See, he fell on his face in worship, adoring God, imploring him, praise God, and implored him saying, Lord, so he called him Lord. Hallelujah. He knew that Jesus was Lord, his Lord and his Savior. He had a personal relationship with the Lord. If you are willing, you are able to cure me and make me clean. So thank God Jesus was approachable. You know, there are some people you, you cannot approach them. Praise God. Some preachers there are too busy. I, I don't have time for you. It's like with the um, Good Samaritan. There was this man, praise God, and he fell among thieves and robbers. And they um, took away his belongings and left him at the, the wayside. You know, I think he was bleeding on the point of death. 
and then there was the priest passed and he, he was too busy he, he was about to do what he was hoping to do the father's will but he was not about to do the father's will because he was in too much of a hurry so when when god put a need in front of him he was not willing to stop so he passed by the levite he crossed over and he passed by and that's not the um weakness of god that we should be showing we should not be too busy to help too busy to pray too busy to study the word of god too busy to go to church too busy to uh, preach the word of god too busy to do the word of god too busy to lend a helping hand praise the name of jesus but it is the little foxes that spoils the vine <laughs> so jesus was always interrupted he, he was over to jairus's house in mark chapter 5 to, uh, because jairus said if you will lay hands on my daughter because she was on the point of death she shall be healed and jesus was about to do that and he was interrupted by the woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years she had spent all that she had and in, and she'd gone to all these physicians and so on and instead of getting better she got worse praise the name of jesus but thank god she forgave all those physicians you didn't hear her um suing them and taking them to court and she heard of jesus and um she was a woman she had an issue of blood she was unclean uh, according to the mosaic law and, and they had a right to stone her to death but she risked her life she heard about the miracles that jesus had performed and she knew that if she could just touch the fringe or the hinge of his garment she should be made whole she would be made whole so she pressed her way through the crowds and she touched the hem of, of his garment and she felt that she was healed in that moment and Jesus knew that virtue had gone out of him and he said who touched me and the disciples were saying you've seen the multitudes I'm touching you and you say who touched me so they're saying you know and you're crazy there's so many people there's a large multitude of people following you and they're thronging you almost to suffocate you and he's saying who touched me but the woman though she was afraid she she came and she told Jesus the whole story and he said I think it was your faith has made you whole praise god so she was rewarded so when when you have strong faith in god you will draw out miracles praise the name of jesus so we give god honor and we give god glory so we thank god for this um leper praise god he he, he was um he could not be with his family praise god he, he was out there uh, and the leprosy was an incurable disease at that time and he was left there to die if he had a wife he couldn't see her he couldn't have a relationship with her if he had children he, he must have missed them how lonely and sad he must have felt he probably felt so rejected so sad but because of his disease praise god he couldn't come into contact with these people because it was very highly contagious praise the name of jesus and he saw jesus the anointed one and his anointing but he was not sure he knew that jesus could perform miracles he had heard how jesus had healed the sick he cleansed the leopard the lepers he'd raised the dead praise god he raised lazarus from the dead and he'd done he'd done all these wonderful things but he wasn't sure you know i, I know you'll probably do it for sister sue i know you'll do it for sister marie i know you'll do it for mark i know you'll do it for dennis but will you do it for me god praise the name of jesus and what i love about jesus you know is his immediate response it was like when peter was about to sink you know and he cried out to the lord because peter had walked on water and he cried out to the lord lord help me and immediately jesus reached forth and helped him and it was the same thing that he did to this man who had leprosy he was full of leprosy he was covered with leprosy he was at the point of death he was ostracized by his, by his family praise the name of jesus people couldn't come near him he was carrying a highly contagious plague it was worse than um covid 19 praise the name of jesus i don't know how long this man had been in the company of anyone you know whether he'd ever whether he'd had a encouraging smile for years i don't know how long it was since he'd been touched and he had one touch from the master and he was healed straight away praise god we thank god that jesus had no fear in in him 
you know there is no fear in love perfect love is perfect god cast it out fear for he that fear it is not made perfect in love and we know that our wonderful redeemer our wonderful friend our wonderful covenant keeping god hallelujah the god who watches over his word to perform it the god with whom all things are possible the God who heals all our diseases, the God who redeems our lives from destruction, who crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. He reached forth and when he answered the man and he said, I am willing. And he touched him and immediately the leprosy left him. So he was at the point of death and he had one touch of, from the master and his life was fully restored. He had hope praise God hallelujah I can imagine if all the blood had gone from his cheeks you know due to the leprosy praise God he was at probably at the point of losing limbs or he had probably had lost several limbs to this deadly disease this contagious disease and then you know Jesus touched him I can imagine all the blood flowing um, in his face and him having rosy cheeks he was restored perfectly to health so i'm here to encourage you whatever is going wrong whether it's in your marriage whether it's in your finances whether it's in your relationships there's nothing too hard for my lovely king of kings and my lovely lord of lords and he will restore you and he will make you whole but be it according to your faith because if you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed you would say to this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and it shall be done regardless whether it's a mountain of lack a mountain of sickness a mountain of disease a mountain of sadness a mountain of oppression a mountain of depression nothing is too hard for my lovely king of kings and my lord of lords but be it according to your faith so have faith in god trust in the lord with all all your heart every fiber of your being and lean not onto your own understanding you know because if you go by your five physical senses what you can see hear feel taste touch and so on <laughs> it will lead you the wrong way because there is a way that seems right to a man that the ways thereof are the ways of death so you just go by your inner feelings your inner being that well not even just feelings that you know that you know that you know with god all things are possible yes you might have gotten the coronavirus some of your organs might have um been uh, damaged praise god but trust god he is the great restorer he is jehovah rapha he Lord that healed me and just like how he healed this leper one time this man you know he was at the point of death and just by one touch of the master in a split second he was healed so it can be with you be it according to your faith praise God without faith it's impossible to please God but those who come to him must believe you must believe it's just like you must be born again <laughs> and but God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him because um you must be born again that which is of flesh is of the flesh and that which is of the spirit is of the spirit it's like Nicodemus he came to Jesus by night and he wanted to know what he should do to be born again if he could go back into his mother's womb and be born again the second time but you have to believe in your heart according to Romans 10 9 to 10 believe in your heart confess with your mouth that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God God rose him from the dead on the third day and you will be saved because with the heart you believe and with the mouth you confess so um fights it doesn't really make logical sense because if you try to reason things out all the time and go by sight you can reason yourself out of a miracle even when david you know in the natural david was a young teenager and goliath he was a trained warrior i think from his youth and he was big and he was tall and he had a big mouth i think it was for 40 days he stood on that hill and he, he was still in Saul and his army you know bring one of your men to fight against me <laughs> and if you defeat me we will serve you but if you defeat if you yeah if, if you defeat us we will serve you and vice versa praise but he had a, a very big mouth 
and um, Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And the Bible tells us we must resist him steadfast at the onset. You just don't wait until there is a big mountain, a mountain of fear, you know, a, a mountain of lack, a mountain of depression, and then you start to uh, try to speak the word. As soon as it comes, the weeds come in your garden, you speak. And, and David said he, he will fight him, you know, he was not afraid. And when they were uh, when they were about to fight, David ran quickly, <laughs> and he killed Goliath with one stone and a sling. So many people may try to stop you from doing what the Lord has told you to do, but you have to believe because even Saul was telling uh, um, David, "No, you can't do this. You're a small boy. This guy is a trend. He's a um, trained warrior from his youth, and and then then he was telling David to use his armor." But David was not familiar with um, Saul's armor. Saul's armor was for Saul, it was not for David. So some people are trying to fight battles in other people's anointings or trying to do the work of God using someone else's gifts. But you have to use your own gift. God has anointed us and empowered us for service. Praise God. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, he comes to live on inside of you and you have power and might. Praise the name of Jesus to do things that you never thought possible. If you hold your place in Luke 5, let's go to Acts 1 8, and it's going a, a bit different from how I had planned it, but <laughs> let the Holy Spirit have his way. It's God's meeting, it's not my meeting. Praise God. So we give God honor and we give God glory. He knows exactly what you need to hear today, He knows exactly what I need to hear because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and all things that are made were made by God and there's nothing that has been made without him praise God hallelujah so Acts 1 8 but you shall receive power ability efficiency and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends and the very bounds of the earth. So you receive power, you're empowered for ministry when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. So let's go back to Luke 5 12. While he was in one of the towns, there came a man full of and covered with leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you are able to cure me and make me clean. And that's exactly what Jesus did. You know, many people, they have not because they don't ask. So you have to ask. You need to seek, according to Luke 11, from every verse 9. You need to seek and you shall find. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and it shall be opened. To everyone seeks, finds. To everyone who knocks, the door shall be opened. Jesus will in no wise cast out anyone who comes to him. He even told the disciples, suffer the little children. That word suffer in that case means allow. Allow the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of God. So you don't hinder people, you know. People who um, cause little ones to stumble and, and to um, backslide. It, it, it'll be um, worse than having a, um, a little stone tied around their neck and drowned in the sea. So you don't hinder anybody. Praise God. You don't pull them out of the body of Christ. Praise God. Don't encourage them to sin. You let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And we thank God that God's sheep hear his voice and they follow him. And no one is able to pluck them out of his father's hands. We thank God that God and his father, Jesus and his father are one. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 13, Luke 5, 13. And Jesus reached out his hand. So the hand of love reached out immediately and touched him. You know, what a beautiful touch, a beautiful caress. I can imagine how comforted this man felt. He probably hadn't been touched for years and years and years. He was ostracized. Praise God, he was a leper. No one wanted anything to do with him. You know, he would have to go on the um, hillside or wherever and scream out, leper, leper, praise God, so that the people would disappear because he had no right being in public. Praise God, with that contagious disease saying so jesus reached out and touched him what a wonderful touch he, he received from the hand of love himself saying i am willing be cleansed then he spoke the word and that's what we must do 
And look what happened after Jesus spoke the word. Because he spoke the word, which is truth. Praise God. He spoke the word, which cannot return to him void. He spoke the word, which he, which he watches over his word to perform it. Jesus spoke the word, which upholds all things by the word of his power. You can find that in Hebrews 1, 3. He upholds all. Everybody say all <laughs> things by the word of his power. So he, his words are yes and amen and they are beautiful for every situation <laughs> and they are the solution to every problem and with God all oh, <laughs> things are possible I wish you were sitting beside me and I'll get you to say all <laughs> all and those are all good things praise God because God is all good he's all wonderful he's all powerful praise God he's almighty <laughs> and all things are possible to him that believe there's no failure in God he's the covenant keeping God my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone forth out of my mouth you can find that in Psalm I think 89 verse 34 praise God he's the covenant keeping God so so Jesus reached out his hand and touched him saying I am willing be cleansed and immediately immediately it didn't take one hour two hours three hours 20 days 30 days 40 days six years but immediately the leprosy left him thank god for that and that is doing the will of the father doing the will of the father includes healing the sick cleansing the lepers raising the dead freely as we have received freely shall we give so hold your place in um luke chapter 5 please and go to matthew chapter 10 verse 1 praise god the gospel of matthew chapter 10 verse 1 and jesus summoned to him so he called his disciples you know like someone may be summoned to court or whatever praise god sometimes he may be summoned to do jury jury service or whatever it was but jesus summoned to him so he called his disciples he commanded them to come to him his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over unclean spirits he gave them power and authority he, didn't, he wouldn't call you to do the works of god or to do greater works without um, empowering you first to drive them out and to cure all kinds of diseases so what does it all mean it means everything no disease is excluded praise god and kinds of weakness and infirmity now verse 8 and he goes on to tell him cure the sick raise the dead cleanse the lepers drive out demons freely without pay have you received freely without charge give praise god hallelujah see you don't have to charge people for laying hands on them praise god and seeing them recover it is the father in us he is the one who does the work and we will not only do the works that jesus did but we will do greater works also back to luke chapter 5 our um, key scripture for today praise the name of jesus we give god honor and we give him praise luke 5 14 so after jesus had um healed this man and immediately the leprosy left him and jesus charged him to tell no one that he might chance to meet until he said you go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your purification as moses commanded for a testimony and proof to the people that they may have evidence of your healing so he um gave him this simple command he says don't testify yet you go to the priest do you and then you can testify praise god hallelujah But when he went to uh, Moses, then it would prove that he was healed. But so much the more the news spread abroad concerning him and great crowds kept coming together to hear him and to be healed of their infirmities. So these people didn't just come to hear, you know. Some people go to healing services and they're thinking, why doesn't he or she just shut up and lay hands on the sick so that we can recover? But these people, they came to hear and to be healed. It's like um, I was saying earlier, we need to attend to the word of God by our air gate 
as well as our, our eye gate, as many services as we possibly can. Praise God. Some people learn easier by the spoken word. Some people learn more when you do examples and show them pictures and things like that. But the main fact is that we're learning. And if you take the word in, in as many sources as you possibly can, you'll be able to get a better understanding of the word of God. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the servant is not greater than his Lord. So if he's telling us to attend to his word of God, we need to attend to the word of God. The um, measure of attention you give to something is what's going to come back to you. If you give God a little bit of attention, <laughs> you give the word of God a little bit of attention, you will have a little knowledge of the word of God. But if you give him a lot of attention, you may be very anointed, uh, have a powerful ministry, you may be able to do greater works than what he did. Praise God. Hallelujah. We give God honor and we give God glory. Whatever is inside of you will eventually come out. Praise God. So a part of doing the will of the Father is to be in the right place at the right time. And it's very important for us to be in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. For example, if um, Jesus was not in the right place at the right time and the leper wasn't in the right place at the right time who we just healed, this guy would not have been healed. He would have been desiring. He might have been saying many prayers and stuff, but he would not have received his healing. It's the same thing when um, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Praise God. He told, he told Lazarus, come forth. And he was able to come forth out of the tomb. Praise God in his grave clothes. And Jesus was telling them, to loose him and let, it, let him go. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's have a look at John chapter 11. We'll just read a few verses from there. So Jesus was in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Praise God. Because if he went prematurely before um, Lazarus had died, then he wouldn't have been able to raise him up from the dead. And then all the other people who, who, who were um, saved, because there's many people, they're not going to be saved, they're not going to believe on the Lord until they see miracles. So signs and wonders follow believers. Believers don't have to be going everywhere looking for signs and wonders. Signs and wonders, miracles follow believers. And Jesus was always doing, doing the right thing. He was always in the right place at the right time, saying and doing the right thing, which was the will of the Father. John 11, verse 43. When he, this is Jesus, the anointed one and his anointed, had said this, he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Well, let's go back to verse 42. John 11, verse 42. Yes, I know you always hear and listen to me, so that's the confidence that he have, you know, like first John 5, 14 and 15, it says, this is the confidence that we have in him, that we have in God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So if you ask him to be healed, you know it's the will of the Father and that he will hear you. If you're asking for somebody's husband, then you'll know that's not the will of God and he's not going to hear that prayer. Maybe Satan will answer it, but God wouldn't because he doesn't come to steal kill and destroy and what God has joined together let no man put asunder so yes I know you always hear and listen to me but I have said this on account of and for the benefit of the people standing around so that they may believe that you did send me and you have made me your messenger when he had said this he shouted with a loud voice why did Jesus shout he shouted because God told him to shout Lazarus come forth Maybe Lazarus wouldn't have heard him if he said it in a whisper. <laughs> Praise God. Well, actually, he, he would have heard because God's word cannot return to him void. But he shouted because God told him to shout. And out walked the man who had been dead, his hands and feet wrapped in burial clothes, linen strips, and with a burial napkin bound around his face. Jesus said to them, Free him of his burial wrappings and let him go. I think the King James Version says, loose him and let him go. 
So I'm here to tell you, praise God, that God is here. He's in this place. Praise God. And we also are his hands and his feet on this earth. We are his voice in, in, in this earth. And whatever you've been bound in, whether you've been bound in drug addiction, sex addiction, adultery addiction, pornography addiction, uh, um, addicted to sadness, loneliness, Praise God, whatever you're bound in, whatever, whether you're oppressed of, whatever it is, whatever evil spirit you may be oppressed of, whether you're depressed, whether you're sad, hallelujah, whether you're um, bound in lack, bound in sickness, bound in disease, bound in failure, I'm here to tell you the Spirit of God is here to loose you and let you go in the name of Jesus. Be loosed from every oppressive spirit in the name of Jesus. Be healed, be made whole in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's have a quick look at Luke 4, 18 as we continue to preach. Praise God. Father, we just thank you so much for your word, which is beautiful for every situation and which cannot return to you void. Hallelujah. We give God honor and we give God glory. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, the anointed one, the Messiah. This is Jesus, the anointed one speaking. To preach the good news, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to send forth as delivered those who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed, and broken down by calamity, to proclaim the accepted and acceptable year of the Lord, the day when salvation and free favors of God profusely abound. Praise the name of Jesus. So we thank God that Jesus was anointed and he has anointed us to not only do the works that he did, but greater works also. Hallelujah. In order to do the will of the Father, we need to be in the right place at the right time, doing exactly whatever he tells us to do. It's the same way because if Jesus was not um, at the wedding in John chapter 2, where he performed his first miracle in Galilee at the wedding when the people had need, they had run out of um, wine and they, they could have been embarrassed. And um, Jesus turned the water into wine so he was in the right place at the right time saving that uh, marriage from embarrassment saving that marriage from starting off on the wrong foot because they could have been starting off in strife you know i thought we ordered everything everything should have been done perfectly it's my wedding day you know i'm never going to get married again this is my first wedding i wanted it perfect so he stopped all that strife and bickering and embarrassment by turning the water into the wine so he was in the right place at the right time and even the guy had to stay you have saved the best for last so we give god honor and we give god glory god is a good god he's a wonderful god and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him let's have a quick look at um john chapter 5 verse 19 because jesus only did the things that the father told him to say he was always in the right place at the right time uh, doing the right thing and my prayer for us today father god i pray in the name of jesus you would help us to always be in the right place at the right time doing the right thing help us to be ready for the second coming of your son jesus christ that none of us will be left behind in the name of jesus so Jesus answered them by saying, I assure you more suddenly, so suddenly, so he's saying this is without a shadow of a doubt. I tell you, it's of far most importance. I tell you, the son is able to do nothing of himself, of his own accord, but he is able to do only what he sees the father doing, for whatever the father does is what the father does in the same way in his turn. So he was only doing what the father does praise the name of jesus let's go on to 20 and 21. the father dearly loves the son and discloses to 
shows him everything that he himself does and he will disclose to him let him see greater things yet than these so that you may marvel and be full of wonder and astonishment just as the father raises up the dead and gives them life makes them live on even so the son also gives life to whomever he wills and is pleased to give it so we thank god that jesus is the good shepherd and he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly we thank god that the prophet elijah was in the right place at the right time when we read of the story in first kings chapter 17 when he not only was able to feed the widow woman hallelujah <laughs> well god fed them through um multiplying the oil and the meal that she had after she had made a cake for the prophet first and then made one for her son so they didn't lack and the um, oil and the meal didn't stop multiplying until the famine had ended because god is faithful and he watches over his work to perform it so when the widow woman's son and i think maybe that might have been our only son when he had died praise the name of jesus the prophet elijah was able to raise him from the dead if he was not in the right place at the right time and this widow woman had the need her son would not have been raised from the dead so doing the will of the father part of it is being in the right place at the right time doing the right thing similar thing in um we find it in luke well actually we'll go to we'll talk about ezekiel 37 when um god spoke to the prophet he says can these um bones these dry bones live and he he didn't really know the prophet didn't know and and the lord told him to prophesy to the bones and a large host of people were able to be able to come back to life because um, the prophet Ezekiel was in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Praise the name of Jesus. We give God honor and we give God glory. In um, Luke chapter 7, Jesus was in the right place at the right time doing the right thing because if, if he wasn't there, when, when the widow woman's son had died and they were having this funeral, uh, the son would not have been able to be raised from the dead. So it is very, very important to be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. That's the will of the Father. Obedience is the will of the Father. Let's go to Luke chapter 7. We will start from verse 11. Luke chapter 7 comments in verse 11 as I begin to close. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Name, and his disciples and a great throng accompanied him. So um, the will of the Father is for us to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, and raise the dead. Look how many times Jesus was doing that. Praise God. Just as he drew near the gate of the town, behold, he's saying, look, a man who had died was being carried out. The only son of his mother, that was our only son. I don't know if she had any daughters or, any, or anything else. Maybe that was the only child she had. But they said the only son. So maybe she had um, other children and they were girls. And she was a widow. And a large gathering from the town was accompanying her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. So Jesus saw this, this widow woman. She had a need, her only son. I don't know. If, if it took her a long time to conceive, if she had prayed so many prayers, like even Hannah when she had wanted a child, praise the name of Jesus, and her husband, he was he, he had another wife, and the other wife kept giving birth to other children, and they were kind of making fun off of Hannah, you know, because the Lord had shut her womb up, and she made a, a vow to God, praise God, because she was even in, in the um, house of God praying, and the um, the man of God, he, he, he thought that she was drunk because her lips were moving. Praise the name of Jesus. And he wasn't hearing any words coming out, but it was just like on the day of Pentecost when it was too early for these people to be drinking. And they were not drunk, but they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. So, so she, she was earnestly praying to the God and she said to Eli the priest that, uh, um, you know, she, she wanted a son. And he got in agreement with her and she got a son and she said, you know, I, I, I will bring him back to the Lord, you know, when after he's weaned and she kept her promise. This is better not to make a vow to God than to make a vow to God and then to break it. Praise God. But even if you have done that, there's room for forgiveness at the cross. So you don't have to feel, oh, I've got a backslide. I'm not a Christian. I made a vow to God and I didn't keep it. So I'm lost. Uh, I'm destined for eternal hell. No, you're not. I remember too, there was one time I made a vow to God and I didn't keep it, but God is good. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all our righteousness. And I'm still walking with the Father. He's still being good to me. He's still being kind. He's still wonderful. He's still providing. He's still healing. He's still setting free. And he who the Son sets free is free indeed. He's still delivering me from evil. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil, anointed my head with oil, my cup run it over. Surely goodness and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Who shall I fear? And since God be for us, who can be against us? Praise God, he spared not his son from us. Hallelujah. Who shall condemn us? Praise the name of Jesus. God is not condemning. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So we ought to give God some praise and honor because he's a wonderful savior. He's a wonderful healer. So look how he turned death into life. Look what he did for this um, widow woman. So verse 12, Luke 7 verse 12, just as he drew near the gate of the town, behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. So she'd already lost her husband to lose her son. That probably would have sent her completely over the rails. She probably would have given up. But you know, there was death, but there was light at the end of the tunnel. Because if God be for us, who can be against us? And he's given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And a large gathering from the town was accompanying her. And when Jesus saw her, he had compassion on her. He's compassion himself. And he said to her, do not weep. Because sometimes we, we say that, um, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. But let me do nothing to help. But, you know, I, I'm faith without works is dead. And Jesus is always a fake God. Praise God. So he put faith to work by performing uh, miracles and raising this woman's son up from the dead. And he went forward and touched the funeral bear and the uh, Paul bearer stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise from death. And the man who was dead sat up and began to speak. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Verse 16, profound and reverent fear seized them all, and they began to recognize God and praise and give thanks, saying, A great prophet has appeared among us, and God has visited his people in order to help and care and provide for them. Praise the name of Jesus. And the report concerning Jesus spread through the whole of Judea, all the country round about hallelujah we give god honor and we give god glory uh, time is running out i don't really want to keep you too late hallelujah but it's so important to be in the right place at the right time doing the right thing praise god because if elijah praise god not elijah elisha if he was not buried in the right place uh, and um, if this guy who had died, who who was in a uh, who was cast into uh, basically Elijah's tomb or on top of his tomb, he would not have um, been raised up from the dead. Praise God! Because even though the prophet Elijah had died, he was still anointed. Praise God! And the anointing on his grave was able to raise someone who had died and bring him back to life. So we give God honor and we give God glory. God is so good. He is so wonderful. Praise the name of Jesus. We give God honor and we give God glory. Uh, 
I'm trying to find that scripture. Holy Spirit, please um, help me. Father, we give you honor and we give God glory. But in any case, the man had died and the people threw him basically on um, Elijah's um, tomb and then he, he came alive. Hallelujah. And also Jesus um, performed so many miracles in his ministry that it could not be written in all the books of the world. There was not enough space to write all the miracles that Jesus did. So we give God honor and we give God glory. Let's end with John 21, 25. And there are also many other things Jesus did. If they should be recorded, one by one in detail, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain or have room for the books that would be written. So we give God honor and we give God glory and praise. God is a good God. He is wonderful. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for speaking to us in such a powerful way. I pray that our faith level has risen to a new dimension and I pray that you will help us to always be in the right place at the right time doing the will of the Father. We thank you and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you so much for tuning in. Those of you who haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please tap in Pastor Pamela D. Daniels. You can do that in your Google search and you can subscribe and share. Like videos if you like them. I'm not going to tell you to like them if you don't like them because I don't want to ask people to lie. But I, <laughs> I assume many of you watching will enjoy the teachings and share. Because when you help me to get the gospel out, you help to take the gospel out to a lost and dying world. And you, you may be responsible for getting lots of people into the kingdom of God. So be blessed. Have a wonderful week. May the Lord bless and keep you. In Jesus' name. Goodbye.